I appreciate you cruising by for my daily devotions for May the 20th, 2024. And we're going to look at 2 Corinthians 13, Acts chapter 11, Psalm 119, 145 through 152, and 2 Samuel 22. In the 12th chapter of 2 Corinthians, Paul talked about his thorn in the flesh. He'd had all these amazing spiritual experiences, which he didn't like boasting about them, but he had people that were boasting about similar things, and he was trying to make it clear that he'd had the same thing, but this is what he said about it. Verse 7 of the 12th chapter, down through verse 10. To keep me from becoming conceited because of the surpassingly great revelations, there was given me a thorn in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to torment me. Three times I pleaded with the Lord to take it away from me. It's some kind of a either physical ailments of some sort. We don't know what it was. But he said to me, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. When we're weak and we need God in an area, that's when his power kicks in. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's may, power may rest on me. That is why, for Christ's sake, I take delight in weaknesses and in insults and in hardships and persecutions and difficulties. For when I am weak, then I am strong. When I'm weak and I admit it, God's power kicks in. Wow, we need to hang on to that and admit where we're weak. And God will empower those things. There's all kinds of examples I could give you about that in my life over the 75 years that I've been stumbling along through life in, on planet Earth. You know what I mean? Let's pray and we'll jump into the word for today. Father, speak to us with your word. Crawl inside our lives with the power of the Holy Spirit and make changes. Make us your people your way, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. 13th chapter of First Corinthians, Second Corinthians. Then tomorrow we'll jump into Galatians. Great book, great uh, uh, letter. This will be my third visit to you. Every matter must be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. I already gave you a warning that uh, when I was with you the second time, I now repeat it while absent. On my return, I will not spare those who sinned earlier or any of the or any of the others. Since you are demanding proof that Christ is speaking through me, he is not weak in dealing with you, but is powerful among you. For, to be sure, he was crucified in weakness, yet lives by God's power. Likewise, we are weak in him, but by God's power we live with him to serve you. Examine yourselves to see whether you are in the faith. Test yourselves. Do not do you not realize that Christ Jesus is in you unless, of course, you fail the test. And I trust that you will discover that you have not failed the test. Now we pray to God that you will not be that you will not do anything wrong. Not that people will see that we have stood the not that people will see that we have stood the test, but that you will do what is right even though we may seem to have failed. For we cannot do anything against the truth, but only for the truth. We are glad whenever you are weak, but you are strong, and our prayer is for your perfection. This is why I write these things when I am absent, so that when I come, I may not have to be harsh in my use of authority. Authority the Lord gave me for building you up, not for tearing you down. Christian authority builds up. It doesn't tear down. That's ah, so important. Finally, brothers, goodbye. Aim for perfection. Listen to my appeal. Be of one mind. Live in peace. And the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All the saints, saints send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And then Acts chapter 11. The apostles and the brothers throughout all Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised believers criticized him and said, you went into the house of, an, of, of uncircumcised men and ate with them. Peter began and explained everything to them precisely as it had happened. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision. I saw something like a large sheep being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to where I was. I looked into it and saw four-footed animals of the earth, wild beasts, reptiles, birds of the air, then I heard a voice telling me, go go up, Peter, kill and eat. I replied, surely not, Lord. Nothing impure or unclean has ever entered my mouth. The voice 
spoke from heaven a second time. Do not call anything impure that God has made clean. This happened three times, and then it was all pulled up to heaven again. Right then, three men who had been sent to me from Caesarea stopped at the house where I was staying. The Spirit told me to have no hesitation about going to them. These six brothers also went with me, and we entered the man's house. He told us how he had seen an angel appear in the house and say, to, and say Send to Joppa for Simon, who is called Peter. He will bring you a message through which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit came on them as he had come on us at the beginning. Then I remembered what the Lord had said. John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So if God gave them the same gift as he gave us who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to think that I could oppose God? When they heard this, they had, a, a, they had no further objections and praised God saying, so then God has granted even the Gentiles repentance unto life. Now those who had been scattered by the persecution in, connect, in connection with Stephen traveled as far as Phoenicia, Cyprus, and Antioch, telling the message only to Jews. Some of them, however, men from Cyprus and Cyrene, went to Antioch and began to speak of, to Greeks, also telling them the good news about the Lord Jesus. The Lord's hand was with them, and a great number of people believed and turned to the Lord. News of this reached the ears of the church in Jerusalem, and they sent Barnabas to Antioch. When he arrived and saw the evidence of the grace of God, he was glad and encouraged them all to remain true to the Lord with all their hearts. He was a good man, full of the Holy Spirit and faith, and a great number of people were brought to the Lord. Then Barnabas went to Tar Tarsus to look for Saul, and when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were, were called Christians first at Antioch. During this time, some prophets came down from Jerusalem to Antioch. One of them, named Agabus, stood up and through the Spirit predicted a severe famine would spread over the entire Roman world. This happened during the reign of Claudius. The disciples, each according to his ability, decided to provide help for the brothers living in Judea. This they did, sending their gift to the elders by Barnabas and Saul. Took an offering for the folks in Judea and uh, took care of them. That's what Christians do for each other. Psalm 119, 145 through 152. Psalm 119. Sliding into the tail end of the 119th Psalm again. Psalm 119, 145 through 152. I call with all my heart, answer me, O Lord, I will obey your decrees. I call out to you, save me, and I will keep your statutes. I rise before dawn and cry for help. I have put my hope in your word. My eyes stay open through the watches of the night that I may meditate on your promises. Hear my voice in accordance with your love. Preserve my life, O Lord, according to your laws. Those who devise wicked schemes are near, but they are far from your law. Yet you, you are near, O Lord, and all your commands are true. Long ago I learned from your statutes that you established them to last forever. Wow. 140. Okay, then 2 Samuel 22. 2 Samuel chapter 22. This is David's song of praise. David sang to the Lord in the words of this song, the words of this song when the Lord delivered him from the hand of all his enemies and from the hand of Saul. He said, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. My God is my rock in whom I take refuge, my shield and the horn of my salvation. He is my stronghold, my refuge, and my savior. From violent men you save me. I call to the Lord who is worthy of praise and I am saved from my enemies. The waves of death swirled around me. The torrents of destruction overwhelmed me. The cords of the grave coiled around me. The snares of death confronted me. In my distress, I called to the Lord. I call out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice. My cry came to his ears. The earth trembled and quaked. The foundations of the heavens shook. They trembled because he was angry. Smoke rose from his nostrils. Consuming fire came from his mouth. Burning coals blazed out of it. He parted the heavens and came down. Dark clouds were under his feet. He mounted the cherubim and flew. He soared on the wings of the wind. 
He made darkness his canopy around him, the dark rain clouds of the sky. Out of the brightness of his presence, bolts of lightning blazed forth. The Lord thundered from heaven. The voice of the Most High resounded. He shot arrows and scattered the, scattered the enemies, bolts of lightning and routed them. The valleys of the sea were exposed. The foundations of the earth laid bare at the rebuke of the Lord, at the blast of breath from his nostrils. He reached down from on high and took hold of me. He drew me out of deep waters. He rescued me from my powerful enemy, from my foes who were too strong for me. When you're in a pickle, read this chapter. I'm going to keep, keep going here. They confronted me in the day of my disaster, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a spacious place. He rescued me because he delighted in me. The Lord has dealt with me according to his righteousness. According to the cleanness of my hands, he has rewarded me. I have kept the ways of the Lord. I have not done evil by turning from God. All his laws are before me. I have not turned away from his decrees. I have been blameless before him and kept myself from sin. The Lord has rewarded me according to, his, to my righteousness, according to my cleanness in his sight. To the faithful you show yourself faithful. To the blameless you show yourself blameless. To the pure you show yourself pure, but to the crooked you show yourself shrewd. You save the humble, but your eyes are on the haughty and bring them low. You are my lamp, O Lord. The Lord turns my darkness into light. Wow, this is such a great chapter. I'm going to do a bunch of shorts out of this at some point here. With your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. As for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is flawless. He is a shield for all who take refuge in him. For who is God beside the rock? And who is the rock except our God? It is God who arms me with strength and makes my way perfect. He makes my feet like the feet of a deer. He enables me to stand on the heights. He trains my hands for battle. My arms can bend a bow of bronze. You give me your shield of victory. You stoop down to make me great. You broaden the path beneath me so that my ankles do not turn. I pursued my enemies and crushed them. I did not turn back till they were destroyed. I crushed them completely and they could not rise. They fell beneath my feet. You armed me with strength for the battle. You made my adversaries bow at my feet. You made my enemies turn their back in flight, backs in flight. I, and I destroyed my foes. They cried for help, but there was no one to save them. To the Lord, to the Lord, but he did not answer. I beat them as fine as the dust of the earth. I pounded and trampled them like mud in the streets. You have delivered me from attacks, the attacks of my people, and have preserved me as the head of nations. People I did not know are subject to me, and foreigners come cringing to me as soon as they hear me. They obey me. They all lose heart, and they, are, they come trembling from their strongholds. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock, exalted be my God, be God, the rock of my, sa my Savior. He is the God who avenges me, who puts the nations under me. He sets me free from my enemies. You exalted me over my foes. From violent men you rescued me. Therefore I will praise you, O Lord, among the nations, and I will sing praises to your name. He gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing kindness to his anointed, to David and his descendants forever. Wow. That's great. That's great. I love that. That's that's wonderful. Father, thank you for that word from you. I needed that today. And there may be others out there who do. Expose them to it, Father. Thank you for your word that changes our lives from the inside out as you write new stuff on our heart and change us, Father. Do that with your word. It is by prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.